New Era for Banks by Vinfasi and Michael Sieben and Washington President Donald Trump ushered in friendlier era for Wall Street's relationship with Washington, calling for an end to eight years of rising regulations and publicly embracing some of the industry's top leaders. At White House meeting, Mr. Trump promised Friday to undo a bevy of restrictions financial firms put in place of to the 2008 financial crisis, while praising the cures of BlackRock Incorporated and J.P. Morgan Chase and Company. The president thanked Larry Fink, chief executive of BlackRock, the world's largest asset management firm, for doing a great job for me. He managed a lot of my money, Mr. Trump said. The president then pointed to James Dimon, chief executive of J.P. Morgan, the largest U.S., Bank by assets, as he dies cussed making changes to the Dodd-Frank law. There is nobody better to tell me about Dodd-Frank than Jamie, the president said. Mr. Trump smoothed sent shares of banks with large bro units sharply Friday, helping push the Dow Jones industrial average to its biggest one-day gain in nearly two please see banks. Jump 5.5% while Goldman Sachs gained 4.6%. Retail broker Rich Charles Schwab rose 2.6%. Republicans and many in the financial industry cheered Mr. Trump's smooths, saying they gave momentum to their long-sought goal of dismantling TH2010 Dodd-Frank financial overhaul and reducing regulatory costs for financial firms. Many Democrats panned the move as a short-sighted attempt to undo regulations that were a necessary response to the 2008 financial crisis. The development seemed improbable only months ago, when then-President Barack Obama's administration was putting the finishing touches on a broad regulatory crackdown on the industry and populist, anti-war rhetoric from both Mr. Trump, a Republican, and Hillary Clinton, his Democratic rival played a role in the 2016 presidential campaign. Mr. Trump's directives on Friday set in motion an administration game plan for scaling back what he views as overly burdensome financial one directs regulators to identify costly rules and laws, including the 2010 Dodd-Frank financial overhaul. Another paves the way for rolling back an Obama-era retirement savings rule that was on track to take effect in April. The financial industry's influence in Washington has blown some as Mr. Trump moved to hire top Wall Street executives as senior officials. General Economic Council Director Gary Cohn whose tenure as a senior executive at Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated ended less than 40 days ago, engineered the administration's regulatory plan. Mr. Trump's actions on Friday day could benefit Wall Street, and especially investment advisors. His most immediate action was directing the Labor Department to review a recently completed rule restricting how retirement advice is provided. In a memo, Mr. Trump directed the Labor Secretary to study the rule's impact and rescind or revise it if it is inconsistent with the administrator. The memo doesn't delay the rule's effective date, but the Labor Department has that power. The industry had unsuccessfully fought the rule during Mr. Obama's tenure. Backers say it protects investors, while critics say it limits their choices. Mr. Trump signed another executive order outlining regulatory principles, including preventing bailouts and making sure that regulatory policies foster economic growth. The president also ordered the Treasury Secretary and top financial regulators to come back to the White House with a report in 120 days evaluating how existing laws and rules comply with the principles. Mr. Trump also reiterated on Friday his promises to dismantle the Dodd-Frank law. I have so many people, friends of mine, that at nice businesses they can't borrow money. They just can't get any money because the banks just won't let them borrow it because of the rules and regulations in Dodd-Frank. 
Obama era financial rules have raised the cost of doing business for financial causing them to pull back from offering certain loans and other products. Whether this were worth it in the name of financial stationability is a matter of intense debate. The White House said its goal isn't to let Wall Street run wild, but to cull back SPEs if it rules it believes are impeding economic growth without meaningfully making the financial system or consumers safer. We want to do it in a smart, regulated way, Gary. Director of the White House National Economic Council said, Mr. Trump's regulatory review order won't by itself roll back financial regulations. Some policy changes will need approval from Congress while others must be implemented by financial regulators whom Mr. Trump hasn't appointed yet. Rep. And Wagner R. Mo, a leading opponent of the FIDU. Exclaimed, woohoo. After watching Trump sign the Executive Actions House Financial Services Committee Chairman Jeb Hanseling, R. Tex, described the President's moves as the beginning of the end of Dodd-Frank. Senate Banking Committee Chairman Mike Crapo, R. Idaho, called the moves a step in the right direction to get financial regulation right, without line for considering legislation. Criticized Democrats SW Mr. Imps to being what is likely drawn out political battle. Donald Trump talked a big game about Wall Street during his camp at President. We're finding out whose side he's really on, said Sin. Elizabeth Warren D. Mass. A prominent Wall Street critic who helped craft parts of Dodge, she said his actions will put two former Goldman Sachs executives in charge of goating the rules that protect you from financial fraud and another economic meltdown, referring to Mr. Kong, who was until recently Goldman's president, and Stephen Nurchin, a former Goldman banker who is Mr. Trump's choice for Treasury Secretary. Those men have said their goal is to boost the economy, not help Goldman. These latest actions from the Trump administration should show the American public that Trump and his caving net of billionaires is putting the interests of Wall Street above the needs of the rest of us, said Rep. Maxine Waters Carley, the top Democrat on the House Financial Services Committee.